Geekaholics. Today we are going to understand a basic concept of macroeconomics module which is the propensity to save. Savings are very important macroeconomics feature which can be in a favor or can also deteriorate the economy and which is why today's topic is related to savings. Now savings have a major impact and savings are also considered a very crucial factor in various growth and development modules, growth and development major theories and uh, models and also in macroeconomics concepts. So, as uh, the various concepts which were given by John Minard Keynes in macroeconomics, we are going to deal with the concept of average propensity to save and the marginal propensity to save as our basic concept for today. So, let's begin. The average propensity to save and the marginal propensity to save, both of these are uh, very crucial concepts in the macroeconomics module and which is why let's first understand the basic difference between them. Average propensity to save, which is also called as APS, is just the ratio of savings to the corresponding level of income at a certain point of time. Let's understand that with a small example. Let's say today your income is 10,000 rupees. Okay, hypothetically, let's say that your income is 10,000 rupees and the savings that you do out of these 10,000 rupees is of 30%. Okay, so 30% of the savings 30% of the income goes to your savings, right? Now, what is the 30% of your income? So, we are going to write it like this, 30% of 10,000 rupees, okay? And how do you calculate it? You just calculate it by 30 upon 100 multiplied by 10,000, okay? Here, we cancel out the additional zeros and what do we have is 3,000. So, out of your 10,000 income at a certain point of time, okay, you save 3,000 rupees. That becomes your savings. So, if we want to write it as a ratio or if you want to write it as APS, how we are going to write it? It is the APS will be the ratio of savings. Savings are 3,000. Okay, and your corresponding level of income is 10,000. So, this is how you're going to write. Now, obviously, you will not write it in such fraction. You will have to minimize the fraction. So, how we are going to minimize it? You're just going to cancel out the additional zeros. Okay, and that will be your that will be your average propensity to save. Okay, 3 is to 10 becomes your average propensity to save, right? 3 upon 10 or 3 is to 10 is your APS. This is basically just a criteria or this is just a parameter to understand how individuals position their savings towards their income level. Okay, a certain individual who has an income level of 1 lakh rupees per month or 5 lakh rupees per month or 25,000 rupees per month, a variety of incomes are there. What is the proportion of that income that is considered to be savings? So, whether it is 30% or 20% or 5% will be identified with this concept of average propensity to save. And it's a very beautiful concept and a very important concept because individually you may have a variety of saving related ideologies, okay? Many people save more, many people save less. But, in, but on an average, at a macro level, how, what is the average propensity to save for individuals in a country will actually ideally tell about that country's ideology with regards to savings, with regards to investments, with regards to how people consume the commodities and services or their consumption capacities or their consumption behavior and many more things, right? So that's what is your average propensity to save. Now, let's understand the concept of Marginal propensity to save or MPS. 
Now, whenever you learn about marginal, this term in economics, it's always considered as what is the impact when an additional unit is added to the whole quorum or an additional unit of production, additional unit of consumption happens, what is the total impact on the output? That's when we talk about marginal, right? So there are so many concepts related to marginal, uh, marginal utility, marginal cons consumption, marginal propensity to save or consume and many more, right? Now, over here, we are talking about the marginal propensity to save, okay? So this refers to the ratio, again, it's a ratio of change in the savings. So it's basically change in savings upon the corresponding change in the total income change in income income is represented as y in macroeconomics okay so change in s upon change in y over here in aps what did we just say s upon y right over here we are talking about change in savings upon change in income. Let's take a small example for this also. Let's say that your income was 10,000 rupees okay initially and it grew to, be, uh, to become 20,000 rupees correct. So there is a change in the income. What's the change in the income? The change is of 10,000 rupees. 20,000 minus 10,000 the change or the difference in the increased income is 10,000 rupees, right? Now, let's say you were saving 30% of your income, okay, when your income was 10,000 rupees, right? And now, when it is 20,000 rupees, so 10,000, when you were uh, earning 10,000 rupees at that time, 30% of 10,000 was how much? 3,000 rupees, correct? when you were earning 20,000 rupees, let's say that your uh, saving has become 50% 50, uh, 50 okay. So 50% of 20,000 goes into your saving okay. This is all a hypothetical example. 50% 50, 50 of 20,000 is again 10,000 right. So what is the difference between the savings? Initially, when the, it was 10,000, you were doing 3,000 savings. When your income was 20,000, you are doing 10, you are doing 10,000 savings. You are saving 10,000 rupees. So the difference between these two savings is 7,000 rupees, right? And which is why the change in the savings is 7,000 while the change in the income is 10,000, correct? And which is why the MPS, the marginal propensity to save becomes how much? 7 upon 10 or 7 is to 10. You can also make it like a much further, um, a much further fraction by just, you know, uh, dividing 7 by 10 and writing it into points. That's also something that you can do. Okay. But I'm just for simplicity over here, I'm just trying to tell you how the difference is shown okay so your APS was 3 upon 10 okay while your MPS is 7 upon 10 now here marginal propensity to save there are changes that we have seen over here because we are not talking about the fraction of absolute values we are talking about the fraction or the ratio of the change that has happened in the values okay so for simplicity you can take examples which are of lesser statistical data so that when you understand the fundamentals of it you can obviously talk about lakhs and crores and millions and billions and dollars and any such unit you can talk about but basics should be understood only by giving smaller uh, units examples right so that's your marginal propensity to save. Now we have understood two things, APS and MPS and the basic difference between them, right? Now let's also talk about the, let's also talk about the um, difference in the concept furthermore. So if I talk about APS, APS can be less than 
zero. Now, this is a very important parameter or property which is uh, always asked in, uh, you know, MCQ based questions. It can also be asked you, to you as a conceptual question, okay, Ki whether APS can be zero, whether MPS can be zero. So, you have to very much pay attention on this topic. First, we'll talk about APS. Average propensity to uh, save can be less than zero. Now, why is it less than zero? Why are we considering it? When we talk about APS or MPS, these are basic functionalities or basic uh, terminologies given by John Minard Keynes. And Keynes had given the consumption level example diagrammatically where he had given the concept of average propensity to save and he had stated that savings for an individual only start happening when the income grows from zero to more, right? For example, if your income is zero, positive savings will start when the income will start growing from zero. So imagine that you have zero rupees means you do not earn anything. But that does not mean that you, you would not have any savings. You will still be consuming certain food, certain items. How will you consume all of those things? By your savings that you had previously. So certain accrued amount of savings you may have had already, which are associated with zero income also. So at zero income also, you can have certain savings and which is why APS can be less than zero also, right? APS can be less than zero when there are dis savings. Dis savings is just the negative side of savings when your income is zero. At that time, whatever savings you have can be considered as this savings. Okay, for example, that you start earning at the age of 25 and you initially you had certain internships and they were paid internships. So you got 1000 rupees, 5000, 10,000 some money. And after you were, you know, qualified for a job, you got the job and you started earning regular income. Okay, earlier everything that you were earning was not regular income. So it could not be considered as your income. It was just your um, um, certain fees, a certain uh, money that you received for your work or for your service at a certain place at a certain point of time. So you accrued that money, right? And then you utilized it at uh, certain events or certain parties or you purchase your laptop out of, uh, out of your savings. All of that becomes your dis savings because that is the saving that you had even before you started earning regularly. But once you start earning regularly, now you have much more capacity. Now you can save more. Now you can, you know, put some money, money in savings, put some money in consumption, put some money to give away for charity, etc, etc. Right. So that's the concept that has been given over here by Keynes and which is why APS can also be less than zero because um, while you divide it, while you divide your savings by your income and if your income is zero, then obviously your uh, APS should be less than zero. However, things change when you go for the other side, which is MPS. Now, MPS is the change, the fraction of change. Now, change, any change cannot be zero or negative or uh, not negative, but cannot be zero. Okay. So, the zero element cannot happen and which is why MPS can never be less than zero. Okay. Because the change in savings can never be negative. Okay. It, there will always be a certain difference in two amounts, but that amount cannot be negative. Okay. Or that amount cannot be considered as a negative feature. Okay. And which is why um, we have MPS, which is a non-zero. So that's something that is a major, major difference. Again, apart from the two definitions, we have APS and MPS different on this one spectrum too, where APS can be less than zero, but MPS cannot be less than zero. Okay. 
and uh, for the worth of formula i have already told you all that formula for aps is savings upon um, income which is s upon y while if we talk about mps so it is change this delta sign is related to change so change in savings upon change in income which gives you mps right so that is the concept of average propensity to save and marginal propensity to, uh, to save we are going to deal with more such macroeconomics topics related to apc mpc and many more keynesian concepts in our future videos till then stay tuned subscribe to our channel ecoholics and bye bye